Recently, about two months ago at this stage, I made a video discussing the over-promising yet under-delivering nature of the neural DSP quad cortex. But at NAMM this year, things were starting to look up, with the showcasing of one of those undelivered promises, the desktop editor. I ran through it briefly while I was there, and I thought it seemed to deliver exactly what was required of it. There was no latency between the unit and the editor, and I thought, at least, it was very reminiscent of the Helix editor. Which isn't a bad thing, I think the Helix editor is good. So overall, a pretty good development, and deserving of a well done. And I said as much. It's good to see that the, the features have been introduced there, uh, and it does seem to be pretty good. Well done, Euro. With that said though, at the moment of filming, which is at this point over a month since that showcase, it still isn't publicly released, so still undelivered. But hopefully for not much longer. The point is, the thing's starting to look up for Neural. So what do they really, really not need at this point? Anyone? Bueller? On April 23rd, Neural released this statement regarding a security breach which allowed access to users' data. But we're not going to read it yet, because, as you're going to see, maybe there's a, a little bit more to the story. I believe that this story starts a whole lot earlier, about 11 months prior, on the 23rd of May 2022, when a user left this message in the official Neural DSP Discord server. Dear support channel, I was looking at the changes between CoreOS 1.3.3 and 1.3.4. Neural DSP still allows the quad cortex to be used as a first class backdoor for cyber security attacks at the expense of bona fide users. This must stop. I did my best to discuss this with support and also with Manuel Perón directly, but as for now, again, I can see Neural DSP holds its direction of not caring about cybersecurity on the quad cortex. So Neural were warned about a backdoor in the quad cortex that affected user security, and at least according to this guy, they didn't seem to care much. A moderator let us know that it was being handled by Neural DSP leadership. Now this is the time I have to introduce you to a group of people who become very important in this story, the hackers. And I'm sure you're naturally thinking when I say that, they're the bad guys in this. They're not. Actually, when looking at what they did, and of course, what they could have done but didn't, if anything, they're the heroes in this story. Open Cortex is a project that's goal is to open up the Quad Cortex and allow users and a community to write software for the unit. It's basically Quad Cortex owners who want to give the unit features that Neural DSP haven't given it. And in doing so, these select few people have learned a lot about the Quad Cortex, almost everything, including its security flaws. And when the founder of this group discovered a major security flaw, what did he do? He emailed Neural DSP and told them about it. And other members of this group contacted Neural to make sure that they knew about this. This was important. Did Neural fix it? Well, this wouldn't be a video if they did. But what was this problem? What was the security flaw? Well, I'm not as tech savvy as some of these guys, but from what I can understand, there was a vulnerability in the way that the Cortex was coded, and it allowed, with very minimal effort, anyone who had a Cortex to access a lot of information. Developer API keys, the Gmail password for Neural's Gmail account that they used for the reports and logs of Cortex users. In simple terms, a big long list of hundreds of people's names and email addresses. The Quad Cortex also stored users' Wi-Fi passwords, so there was access to that as well, along with the list of serial numbers for each Quad Cortex. Now, if you're a bad guy, there's plenty of bad things that you can do with this information, such as phishing attacks. You know a person's name, you have their email address, you know they're a customer of Neural DSP and specifically what product they bought, as well as the serial number of that product. All you'd really have to do is pose as someone from Neural DSP, contacting the customer, you know their name, tell them that there's a problem with their quad cortex, cite their actual serial number, and that they need to fill out this information using this form, give them a link, that's a Trojan virus, they've got malware or ransomware or whatever. And you can't really blame the victim in that situation because who other than Neural DSP would know all that information? Now with the list of Wi-Fi passwords, things can get interesting. Now there's probably not a huge pool of people, or at least I hope there isn't a huge pool of people, that use the same password for their email account as their Wi-Fi router, but you've got a list of hundreds of people and their Wi-Fi passwords, so you could try. 
But if you wanted to put in a lot more work, but also be a lot more malicious and get a lot more of a payoff, if you can access someone's Wi-Fi network, you can also access any device on that network. That includes all accounts, bank accounts, just about everything, if you know what you're doing. Now granted, you'd have to be in the vicinity of this Wi-Fi network, and a lot of this is people's home addresses. But again, you have all these people's contacts information, you have all their information, you could just contact them posing as neural DSP and ask for a shipping address. And suddenly, well, they've got everything. Now, did our hackers do any of that? No. We've seen multiple occasions of them trying to let Neural DSP know about this problem so that they could fix it before somebody else finds out. April 20th, someone else finds out. But this time, instead of going straight to Neural like the others did, this hacker posted it on Twitter. He showed how he used his exploits to gain access to Neural DSP's Gmail account. He tagged Neural in the post so they'd see it. And of course, they DMCA took down his posts after the fact. They knew about it. But did he do anything malicious? No. He was just kind of trolling Neural DSP into action. And that's not a theory either. Neural admitted that the public pressure made them act faster. And remember, they were told about this months prior. And just to add on here, Neural DSP were incredibly lucky that the people who found this out were the people who found this out. Because Remember, this can be accessed by anyone with a quad cortex, so 15,000, I think, over 15,000 at this point, people had access to this information. Now, let's see Neural's statement. On Friday, April 21st, we were alerted to an unsuccessful login to the email account we use to collect reports and logs sent from quad cortex. This turned our attention to a security vulnerability on the quad cortex that granted exploiters temporary access to the aforementioned email account. Hang on now, you might have been alerted to an unsuccessful login on the 21st of April, but that doesn't mean that there wasn't a very successful login the day before, which you were tagged in. And then of course, if you're talking about being alerted to security flaws uh, 11 months ago, three months ago. This exploit was immediately fixed internally, meaning no further access is possible. However, this has resulted in Quad Cortex being unable to send new report logs until Core OS 2.0.2 has been installed. We are beta testing Core OS 2.0.2 internally and intend to release it this week. Unfortunately, due to the exploit, approximately 3,300 names and email addresses were viewable by a small number of individuals that you know of who are attempting to expose security vulnerabilities on Quad Cortex. This does not mean the exploiters were able to log into the email accounts, they could only see the names and email addresses in a list. While exploiters were able to access the inbox of the email account containing the reports and logs, they did not, to the best of our knowledge, exploit this breach with malicious intent to gain access to customer data. Quad Cortex also records the names and passwords of all the Wi-Fi networks it is connected to since the last factory reset. Unfortunately, this data was not encrypted. <sighs> they didn't encrypt users' data? This is a predominantly software-based company, by the way. The Wi-Fi passwords for any user who sent a crash log to us were also accessible to the exploiters. We identified approximately 430 users affected by this. This issue has been fixed in Core OS 2.0.2, and the Quad Cortex will no longer record the passwords of Wi-Fi networks in the crash logs. No further personal information or sensitive data is collected by Quad Cortex, and therefore, nothing else has been exposed. We have emailed the users who have been affected by this breach. If you have ever sent a Quad Cortex report or a crash log, the above applies to you. If you have not sent a Quad Cortex report or a crash log, your name, email address, or Wi-Fi password has not been exposed. I apologize deeply for this inconvenience and our oversight. We value our users' privacy above anything else. Are you sure about that? Because I'd like to draw your attention once again to this message that I showed earlier. It's from the Open Cortex Discord where Neural staff said, I did want to clarify that we had already resolved a lot of the issues now targeted for 2.0.2 in 2.1.0, but, as Evil Socket said, public pressure was increased, forcing us to act sooner. So you gotta wonder, do you value users' privacy above anything else, or do you value users' privacy above anything else when there's public pressure? Because by your own admission, that's what made you act quickly. And we are devastated to learn of this vulnerability being exploited. We will be doing everything possible to deeply evaluate our systems and quad cortex to ensure nothing like this can happen again. Now, at the time of recording, this problem has been fixed. It has been patched. And they are, once again, 
ridiculously lucky that the guys who found this didn't start taking advantage of this because they very easily could have and just stayed silent. So huge credit to those guys who actually pointed this out. Anyway, at least the problem is fixed now, but it could be handled so much better. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.